Fine Arts Beijing 2030. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Singapore. Thank you for inviting me today as a keynote speaker. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about public transport, but uh, much more about digital technology and that we're facing while we're moving to a second machine age. Um, as the director said, I'm the discipline director of computational design. Um, computational design is a new degree. It's the first bachelor degree in computational design, and we understand computational design as a way to bridge architecture and design on the one side, with engineering and science on the other, also computation and computing. So I think I'm quite at the right place here at the conference with that. What you can see here in that kind of chart is the way we teach, but it's also the way we research and we produce things. We don't really be anymore in only one particular kind of area. We really combine and group different things. And the approach you're going to see today is a result of that kind of grouping and that thinking. First machine edge. Most buildings and most infrastructure you see are coming from a first machine edge. So in the first machine age, general purpose technologies like electricity, steam engine, combustion engine form the new way of architecture. And my previous keynote speaker, who mentioned the productivity in the AEC industry being so low, is, in my understanding, mainly because the AEC industry still heavily depends on general purpose technology like combustion engine electricity, but not on current general purpose um, technologies I'm going to show later. So as much as in the first machine age, new architectures like train stations have approached because of new technologies and new requirements of the technologies. In that example here, steam um, train required huge spans for the steam, not just for steam trains. The second machine age will also have a new way of architecture. Um, there are a few kind of things to understand and an explanation of the second machine ages. I'm going to do that at a later stage. But what you're going to see here with the kind of Google car is not that I'm talking about the Google car and a self driving vehicle as a type of architecture. But it's more an understanding what, what architecture can become through the second machine age, through sensors, digital technology, and so on. Who of you have seen in 2004 the American Defense Agency have put out a research project of having a self driving car in the Mojave Desert in the US? Anybody heard about that project? It was a huge failure. So none of those kind of cars really actually made it any meter or any mile. Um, I think the winning kind of car managed 17 miles out of proposed 250 miles driving along. So it did not really work at all. But within a very short time, only with um, 12, 13 years, we've got now self-driving cars driving around in California. We've got the Tesla is in principle a self-driving car. You just need a software update and it can drive by itself in the legal kind of framework. So you can see suddenly that our um, digital technology really expanded very, very quickly in the last kind of few years. And that's mainly because we entered the second half of the chessboard. Everybody of you probably knows this kind of chessboard analogy where once upon a time a wise man asked for a special kind of gift he got from the king to put one piece of rice corn on the first chessboard square, then two on the next one, four on the next one, eight on the other ones. So that kind of law applies to, to, new, to more laws, to computing, to the, the process of computer chips. And we've been at the moment in the first kind of half where the doubling up of numbers is still in the realm we can understand in, in billions. But if you're going to go into the second half and the kind of computing power gets doubled up each time, you're going to get a number of figures we don't even know yet how to express them because they've been so big. And that will enable things we've seen in digital technology very, very rapidly. So going back to the research project on public transport, in uh, 2010, I started a, a research group called Encircle, and that research group looked into how digital technology can improve public transport. There was a need in Sydney, there still is a need in Sydney, that's what they need in most places around the world to improve public transport. And in most places, in particular in Sydney, it's very difficult to have public transport. Firstly, nobody wants to have a train line in their backyard. Um, so it's politically difficult to build public transport. So Sydney is talking, or New South Wales is talking about 50, 60 years about a high-speed train between the major cities. It's all about talk, nothing really. Um, firstly, it's quite often difficult 
to put more trains or more buses on existing networks because there's a capacity how much you should put onto that. So if you really want to improve public transport, the only third solution would be to inform customers more meaningful about their journey. And if you think about your kind of journey this morning, um, to that kind of conference or your journey to work, quite often you don't really know when the bus or the train actually is leaving. Particularly buses are heavily delayed through public transport traffic, lots of traffic. Um, so there's not really kind of information about where to go, what to do, if you're in a new kind of city, transport information is a bit kind of vague. But you really can improve transport by far more if you improve the way people get informed about their transport decisions. It just makes things easier. Transport, the biggest obstacle is waiting kind of time. So we looked into new ways in how we can kind of address public transport by really bringing a lot of new thinking into what public transport is. Again, public transport, at least in Australia, is a very old male dominated um, profession where there's not much understanding, not much kind of perception of new technologies. So we really just try to put transport um, and the transport thinking upside down and restructure what transport really could be. We've done that in several kind of workshops with, with industry, uh, with computer scientists, with, with software analysts, with designers, uh, with planners, uh, with, with marketing kind of people, to really bring a huge group of different disciplines together. I strongly believe that most kind of new knowledge in a profession that is stuck in the thinking will come from people outside the profession. You just get a fresh kind of view on the things. You just don't really see things with the same old perceived kind of classes. You just gonna look new into things and um, therefore potentially, and there's evidence for that, you've been able to solve some of those kind of problems. So we integrated not only architectural considerations into a kind of project, but also computing and computational investments. And the industry kind of workshops we talked about. So I quickly clicked through the kind of design kind of process, and in principle the design process is nothing really particularly kind of new. Um, we use CNC milling, we use the grasshopper model to produce those kind of elements, um, so we could go straight from a digital kind of model uh, via plug and called Woodpecker into G-code to, to produce the things in the machines. <laughs> um, at the end, as with all kind of digital projects yet, there was still a huge amount of part assembling by hand. Um, that's the back wall. It, by the way, it's a bus stop prototype. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So we designed a bus stop. We couldn't really design a whole train station, so we looked into a, a bus stop kind of prototype. Um, integrated LEDs, and that's the second kind of part we, we've strongly been interested in, and from my own research, in looking to how information and communication technology could be placed into normal infrastructure to make them infrastructure. So we placed LED technology in there, we tested the LED technology uh, to communicate later customer information. Weatherproofing the system. Putting more screen, screen technology in there. By the way, all the things we put in there was all purchased from normal kind of hardware in electronic stores in Australia and JB Hi-Fi. So it's not really state-of-the-art, high-tech from, from the military, it's from consumer electronics you can buy anywhere for, for a couple of hundred dollars or thousand dollars for the larger screens. Um, LEDs is for the most specific kind of thing, but again, you can go then and get them uh, from any kind of supplier, gen then for relatively little money. Including the screens, again, when we looked into the screen integration, uh, we collaborated with colleagues of mine from Sydney University in human computer interaction design. So also the kind of script enabled the position for the screen, so later people can interact in front of the screen. So it's not simply having a screen in the project, but also enable uh, a perfect interaction, because interaction with a screen or with many kind of people on the screen is different than on a small screen. How it's getting one, producing or transporting the bus stop um, to the site and then cleaning up the bus stop for its kind of lounge in 2012 at the customs house in Sydney. Talk a little bit more about the interaction design of, of the thing. Um, as mentioned before, it used very, very common standard components for interaction like an Xbox Connect, um, a normal kind of Mac Mini screens. But we 
understand it as well, it has spent time with those technologies developing systems and apps that enables public transport users to use the bus stop in a more meaningful and be better informed what is happening in the community and also what's happening in public transport. So quickly let me show a video clip there. There's only music, so there's not really such an issue that we can't hear the sound. Kind of work to write that piece of, of, of the conference paper, for example. 
is quite time consuming, but to share that information with other kind of people is very, very cheap and very quick. Because it's all in digital kind of format. The same goes for the music industry, and the same goes for other kind of industries. So sharing of information is, is quite cheap and easy. And we use that in that bus stop on various kind of levels, on the design level, but also we use that quite a lot for um, getting information from other kind of platforms. For example, transport information where the bus is located through a GPS sensor in the bus that send information to the bus stop and then the kind of bus stop could use that information to inform customers and potentially give them options for other um, interactions. For example, the bus is light for 10 minutes and therefore you would get a discount coffee at a close coffee shop close by. And lastly, um, social networks with a user-generated kind of content, which is a very kind of important kind of factor. If you think about Facebook, or YouTube and the amount of information that's uploaded each minute, each kind of second on those networks. It's enormous kind of value to, to gain information. Um, and we try to tap and slowly the bus stop into social network information by simply linking the bus stop as a hub to, to Facebook, Twitter entries of the kind of community in a close kind of proximity to understand better what the kind of community wants to do, what kind of things the community wants to do. So we've been thinking of using in the future um, a system called Joyce Modeling. It's an algorithm that enables um, mainly in marketing um, to, to when you launch a kind of product in, in marketing, you really want to know that that kind of product is, is useful and people want to buy that kind of product. So a lot of kind of marketing companies use um, an algorithm called Joyce Modeling and that's kind of Joyce Modeling algorithm enables you to understand better what a customer later wants to do. So we want to use the same kind of algorithm to understand what kind of needs, what kind of purposes people really have in a particular kind of transport environment to help them with their journey and their journey. So in wrapping up the evolution of that kind of problem, I think we can definitely improve public transport through a system like our bus stop, through a responsive public transport system, because of all the information we can gather in machine learning and artificial intelligence we are in a position where we can create an autocratic system. An autocratic system is a self-generating system where the system generates by itself information. So instead of being depending on information generated through a designer, the system itself can generate information. So very easily by combining, for example, the bus arrival time with the, the traffic information, with your information stored on your phone, um, you would be able to connect those information to say, well, depending on the bus you want to have and your normal profile um, of where you want to sit, for example, in the bus, or if you want to stand in the bus, we can give you specific information and we display that information on, on the screen uh, or on your personal device. And lastly, with the community and well-being, um, I think in, in, in digital kind of areas and digital kind of times, we slowly have to look into a form of digital placement. So we can't really create places anymore in a, in, a, in a traditional kind of sense where we depend on an analogy of a marketplace where people come to do promos. Uh, I don't think that exists in architecture and design in our society anymore. So we slowly have to look into how we can connect the digital devices that we're going to use in a day to day basis. I'm pretty sure in Singapore and other kind of countries, and similarly in Australia, where you've got a, a 80 to 90% penetration of smartphones, so nearly everybody uses a smartphone, everybody is depending on a smartphone. I think that kind of age where a lot of, kind of people use the technologies will reflect very quickly into architecture and place making as well. So what we try to do with the bus stop, and obviously in a very, very small scale, is just try to bring that understanding of a new digital technology in, into design into architecture and for a new kind of typology. So we're going to wrap up with a small video clip that explains the show the bus stop in greater enough detail. What we're going to do is bring the intelligence of a smartphone into a bus stop. So the bus stop has the same kind of capacity to send and communicate to the public as a smartphone would do. So the numbers behind me are just demonstrating how far a bus is away. So it's further the number is away from the front of the bus and the further the bus is away. As brighter the LEDs, the white background are, it's full of the buses. 
it's a little informed you from a greater kind of distance up on the steps of your bus when your bus is arriving. The screen in the back is a community kind of pub. Instead of having an analog notice board you would have in the past, we try to do a local location-based Facebook where people from a community can upload their, their information, their garage sales, their, their sporting kind of events to communicate within a neighborhood. Another feature we have in there is that a camera will monitor and see what happens on your bus stop, but also monitors what happens on other bus stops. So instead of sitting alone in the middle of the night, you've been able to see other people in other bus stops and to communicate and watch each other out so you get a more safe feeling within the bus stop. So we worked in places with Transport New South Wales, the City of Sydney, Arab and Ripshaw Architect. We've been working with them closely for the last two years and have had a lot of exposure to really exciting, interesting student projects and we've both been getting a lot out of the relationship. I think it's great to be able to uh, go do the full uh, process from design to production. I think that helps students understand why we do certain things in design, why detailing is important, and to make sure that everything sort of comes together and shows that the computational design is a different fabrication process because of its accuracy and can actually create very complex projects. I see a future in the transport infrastructure that all infrastructure items like bus stops, tram stops, train stations are connected to each other. So one train station can tell another bus stop about the occupancy, how many people will come to kill that real time and live information in a public transport environment.